Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for another one man review. Today I'll be taking a look at the brand new Fanagraphics release, Peter and Lisa by Miroslav Sekulic Struja, I believe is how you would say that name. Uh, I believe this is a Slavic artist given the fact that this is based in Yugoslavia. Um, and just wow, like right out the gate, before I even show you the book, I'm gonna say wow. This is in the running for best book of the year so far for me. It's a really stunning performance and you'll see what I mean uh, by performance when I start showing the artwork here. So the story is set in ex-Yugoslavia in the late 80s, so coming out, I believe, of, out of the communist bloc here. And this is a, a story that's very much uh, a moody character piece that's focused on like the lives of specifically the Pitar character, but as he meets the Liza, she becomes integrated um, and uses that to give a character study of both uh, Peter and Liza, but also of the areas that they live in. And you, you can see that like very explicitly in the opening pages of the book that place is the main character here. We also get to know the main characters super well, but it's their relationship with place that is so important. And uh, you can see on these opening panels, like how hard the artist goes in each panel. I mean, each one of these feels like they could be a painting up on a wall in a museum to me, just compositionally in terms of the amount of detail. There's never any panel in here where like the Miroslav is taking any kind of break uh the, <laughs> even something like this that doesn't have as many details is so compositionally solid and so fascinating in how the like little like weather vanes and satellite uh, vanes and stuff like carve up the negative space next to this where we've got these fully rendered posters there's stickers on the wall uh, there's like writing all over stuff on the floor. It's it's almost like if Jeff, not quite as crazy as Jeff Darrow, but almost like if Jeff Darrow took the time then to hand paint his stuff. It's just totally nuts. You know, every little bit of like junk and crap on the floor is hand rendered. Um, it's really beautiful. And then the the characters, the artist is not as good with like, using the human body obviously drawing environments painting environments is the artist's main interest um, humans are a little bit more of a struggle it looks like but the style fits really well and fits with i was talking in another video recently about um, seeing art in germany from the pre post world war one pre-world war ii era and how bleak and depressing it was and this has those same vibes as a lot of those artists. Uh, Otto, Otto Dix is someone that people reminded me in the comments of be one of the artists. I think George Gross is another one. A whole bunch of German artists that I saw um, while I was in Berlin. And this has those vibes as well, which I, I know it's coming from a different country, but it, it's this same thing of like a country in ruins post-war transitioning to a new power structure. And that's, you know, we're following both the characters living through those changes and looking at a place undergo those type of changes. So here we meet Peter. Peter's in the uh, the army and he's coming out of like the the war ending or I, I, the, they're getting their freedom from the Soviet Union. I'm, I'm not sure. They don't really go into the historical stuff about that. And, you know, I'm always more of a futurist than a historian. So not quite sure, but they're definitely entering the the time where they're going to be being released from the army. Um, you also get some really nice big spreads like this that are right up there with like the best, most compelling painting compositions you could see. It all feels very, first off, very skilled, like these compositions and the rendering of everything is very skilled. But there's also a little bit of the flattening out. Um, some of the like things like this where, you know, technically it should be in three point perspective, but it's all arranged like on a grid. So there's not much perspective really going on in it. Actually, um, there's some of these things that feel very folk art to me as well. 
but like the really good type of uh, folk art or outsider art, you know, where these people do these things obsessively, like a Henry Darger type of someone, where the compositions just get absolutely packed full. And uh, yeah, like you couldn't ask for more throughout throughout a book visually, especially given what the content is. The, the, this is such a good sense of place that I could taste it, I could smell it, I could feel it. Uh, I get depressed like imagining that people actually live in these. It's it's fantastic. So Peter here is coming home uh, after being in the army, and you can see he's coming home to like this wasteland of a town with these big like abandoned apartment blocks. He throughout the book, uh, it's a bit like a there there's multiple narrators that all like just kind of fade one into the other which adds to that, um, like, I don't know, not fuse isn't the right word, but like this, this flowing state of, of observation about a place and a person where you're hearing Peter's inside thoughts sometimes, and then you'll switch over to like, here you have a character named Natasha, um, who's a ex-girlfriend from college, and she'll like be, be being interviewed now, like, oh yeah, you know, he was always silent, and um, there's never any really formal part of the story that says why these people were, would be being interviewed about Peter. Uh, nothing like that. It's just kind of thrown in there, but it doesn't seem like a bad choice. It feels really natural, even though it doesn't ever go anywhere, really. Uh, it just adds to this, like, fully rounded view picture of a person in a place where it's like his opinion of himself, other people's opinions of himself, his opinion of the place, other people's opinions of the place. And those things all just flow real naturally one into the other um, in the story. I never felt like, wait, what's going on? I'm confused. Who's talking now? It didn't matter. Uh, they all kind of came together to create one voice, which is a really interesting writing strategy. I think that, you know, the these were so hooked up narratively that the multiple voices could become uh, one. And I, I think that's maybe part of the content of the book as well. When we're looking at um, sense of place, there, here's another really good scene. So here Peter goes into this obviously like punk metal club. This, this sequence also shows, I think one of the biggest pluses of the book was also one of the uh, biggest drawbacks for me in a sense that there's so much going on in any one of these panels like I said that I could really just stop and consume them for uh, 30 seconds a minute per panel just looking at what's this character doing what's this character doing what are these characters doing and then I come to this and like everyone's acting everyone's an individual everyone's got different tattoos and different haircuts and different demeanors and there's a chick here with her shirt off that I didn't notice when I was reading. A kid on a dad's head, like the, the parents are talking with each other. This person's turned around. Uh, there's just so much to look at that it slows you down to a pace that's hard then to remember, like between here and here, what was said narratively. So I think this is a book that really you should A, just read through and get the story and then go back and treat it as like an art book and just enjoy the art. And that, like, like that's, that's fine. That happens in comics. Like sometimes there's so much going on in the art. I can't read it at the enjoying the art pace and, and be at the story pace. And I'm, I'm cool with that, uh, especially in this book. And you can see just a couple pages later, now Peter's gone into a different bar uh, where it's a much different crowd. And it's like jazz music, and it has like this more underground swinger type of thing. Old people, more hippies, hipster people. And the, just everything about it, it changes. It, it all feels really natural. Like I, it's a different type of smoke-stained bar, and I, I love that that comes across in the art. So we're 52 pages into the book before we ever even really meet Liza. And Liza doesn't come back in... You know, she she only comes in intermittently until way later in the book. But you see Liza here is a dancer, and uh, she's running out of her dance class and just has this really chance, kind of bumps into Peter, and then they're just like, oh, sorry, and they move on. And then she doesn't come back for a while. So she's almost just like part of this environment that he's in as well, where she's, she's a thing that he's bumped into a couple times before they really meet. 
And they do eventually meet. Now we're at the page 92 of a 170 page book. So like over halfway through where we, we really start getting into their relationship. Again, you can see a real change in the art style, real change in the colors. You can see like there's so much time setting up the visceral nastiness of this hometown that Peter's come back to that by the time you get to meeting Lisa, Liza, you really get a sense of how she changed his life, you know, and that he's seen the world as a rosier place because of her and, and her because of him. So the, their relationship becomes very interesting throughout. I won't go into any more of, you know, what goes on between them, but that's all really cool. And it's really nice to see how that's set up in relationship to the first chunk of the book. And then without trying to get give everything away or give an ending to it, just to, to keep talking about this sense of place and space, you can see that there's a time jump at the end of the book where we catch up with the characters like now, you know, whereas most of it's set in the late 80s. Um, we're seeing that now in a town that's been rebuilt and modernized on top of, you know, these like empty slummy fields of apartment buildings and, and stuff that the characters are spending most of the majority of the book wandering around in. And so you see that that is still like the main intent of the author is to give this character driven story where one of the two or three main characters is the city that informs the characters. And that's beautifully represented by this spread. So, uh, Art, writing, like just everything, pacing in this book, structure of the book, structure of the narrative is just beautiful all the way throughout. I could not recommend a book more. The only knock I have on it, and I think this was probably just something went wrong uh, in the design of the book, maybe, I'm not sure, but it's got this damn sticker on the back, so it has the label and like the bit of writing about it. I don't know why this wasn't just designed on here. It feels like what happened is when the files got sent over, Fantagraphics fucked up and didn't have this on the back. And so they had to print a sticker and slap it on after the fact. Unfortunately, it's not a sticker you can peel off easy either. Uh, maybe this is a case like with the Jordan Crane's book where he was intending for the sticker to come off and they assured them it would and it didn't. This might be the same situation where Fanographics was told this would come off easy and it doesn't. Um, anytime there's a sticker on a book, I tentatively try and peel it away and this one definitely was not going to easily peel off. So not a big fan of stickers on my books. That's a personal preference. Uh, but that no has nothing to do with the just absolutely stellar performance put in by Miroslav Sekulik Struja, uh, an artist that I can't imagine how many more books they're gonna have in them working this way, but God, I hope it's a lot, and I hope if there is anything else done by Miroslav Sekulik Struja that Fantagraphics will be translating eventually, because this is a phenomenal book and in, in the running for Book of the Year. House on Fire by Matt Battaglia is a just gorgeous book where Matt's kind of making an emotional response to the the years of COVID and wrapping that into a sci-fi dystopian future that really the sci-fi dystopian's backgrounded and you're fo focused on the emotional journey of two characters in a really beautiful way. And then that's enhanced by Matt's like really awesome, loose, kind of Paul Popish um, dry brush work. And then Sh Sean and Matt have worked to get this second kind of orange spot color in there that's gonna look really, really beautiful and it has allowed Matt to use his dry brush technique to add tone to the thing too. So um, with Sean's production technique, this is gonna be a gorgeous book with a lot of heart.